Hi, welcome back to another video on my uh, DIY power wall or power basket as, I, as I've called it. I uh, originally installed this about two weeks ago and that's what the uh, previous video was all about. So if you, if you haven't seen that yet, here's a link, to, here's a link in the uh, description and around here somewhere. So I'll let you uh, catch up on, on that one. Um, since I filmed that one, the uh, UK weather has definitely turned wintry. It's uh, about three degrees in this garage now, hence the uh, coat and uh, I'm not going to be standing around here too long. I was hoping that I would always get away without needing to fully balance the uh, cells that I bought, um, but that's probably not going to work. But uh, let me let me go back in the warm and uh, I'll show you what I mean. This is an app on my phone that's supplied with the so far inverter I'm using. I must say it's terrible. However, what it does allow me to show you is that in the past two weeks, I've pumped over 100 kilowatt hours into and out of this battery, some from solar, but most of it from overnight lower cost electricity. So after all that energy, I'm comfortable that the battery is robust and doesn't have any major concerns. Opening the web interface onto DIY BMS, you might spot some subtle differences. This is a work in progress version, and there are a few visual differences, such as the purple and yellow highlights, indicating the top and bottom cell voltages. This version of the code isn't ready for mainstream use at the moment. I'm doing a lot of work behind the scenes on the integration with Canvas and the uh, Python Tech battery emulation. So that can talk to the inverter. But don't worry, it will all be released soon. You can see on screen that the uh, cell range is only 24 millivolts. That's the difference between the highest and lowest cell voltages. Doesn't sound too bad, does it? Unfortunately, that's only a snapshot at this point in time. It doesn't really indicate how balanced the cells are or not in this case. Using the integration features of DIY BMS, I'm outputting all the cell data over MQTT into the uh, Open Energy Monitor EMON CMS system. Here's a graph of the cell range shown in red. Whilst generally keeping around the 30 to 40 millivolt range during charge and, and discharge, when the uh, state of charge, which is shown in yellow here, falls to a very low value, the gap in the cell voltages widens, in this case over 188 millivolts. If I leave the cells as they are, I'm never going to get full capacity from the cells, and they won't equally charge and discharge. I should have balanced the pack before uh, the first power up, but you know, where's the fun in that? What I'm planning to do is to use the inverter to force charge the battery at about three kilowatts. Once a few of the highest cell voltages around 3.45 volts, I'll stop. Unfortunately, I then need to disconnect all the cells, but I'm not going to remove them from the battery basket container. I need to maintain the compression on the cells as they are likely over 90% charged in this state already. I'm going to connect them into a giant parallel battery and use a bench power supply to continue charging them. Right, so we're back in the garage. Um, I suspect this is probably 90-95% fully charged now, uh, but obviously we've got the um, cell imbalances. So uh, I'm going to uh, switch the inverter off. and. So uh, this insulation is actually doing quite a good job of uh, keeping the cells above about 10 to 15 degrees at the moment. N none of the, the balance modules are actually fired off uh, at all since I've been using the battery, so that's obviously kept the temperature down, but um, just the sort of charge and discharge cycle seems to be keeping the heat in here quite nicely. Uh, obviously I'm, I'm just about to let all that out. I've added some little uh, foam wedges in here just to uh, keep the lid off the top of the cells. I can feel that it's slightly warm in here, so um, it's normally warmer in the, in the middle looking at the stats, so I think it's about 20 degrees C there after the, the full charge, but that, that's been charging at three kilowatts for about four hours. So now what I'm gonna do is to disconnect all the uh, jumper bars between the cells. Um, I have read your YouTube comments, and yes, I know, I, I should have insulated my tools better before I uh, started this last time, so I've got some heat shrink around this, um, and also around, around the uh, fitting as well, so um, sh that should ho hopefully save, save me from uh, causing any sparks. I'll start with the uh, negative. Now I've dismantled the uh, battery, I'm uh, 
going to basically jump between all the negatives and all the positives. I've just taken a bit of cable and uh, shredded the insulation off at uh, regular intervals, um, just enough to uh, jump across the, uh, the cells. Um, so let's see how we get on with this. I'm going to leave the BMSs um, connected um, because then I should be able to actually monitor the, um, the voltage and obviously you would expect to see the same voltage across every single cell that we've got on here. So it should also allow me to, uh, to calibrate those out as well. So I need to be quite careful how I'm uh, going to arrange these. And basically I'm going to loosely uh, screw them down as we go. There's not going to be much uh, current flowing through these, um, so that's one of the reasons why uh, I wanted to balance the cells first to make sure that the voltages are very similar, similar size, uh, not size, similar range as well. Um, so if you remember, they're about 20 to 30 milliamps difference on this. Um, so that will also stop um, any large currents from flowing. Okay, I'm just going to do a really simple uh, continuity check against all the negatives now, make sure that they're all actually joined up. Um, so if I start with this most negative. So now, now all the uh, cells are connected together into one big three volt battery. Um, we can have a look at the, what the uh, voltage is at the moment, 3.332. And obviously every cell should be uh, read the same, 3.331, okay. go. Right, so I've connected up this power supply, um, which is a Ryden branded, um, power supply unit, it's, it's a typical sort of thing you find on um, AliExpress. Um, so I can set the uh, charge volt voltage. Um, at the minute I'd like to go up to 3.55. Uh, this power supply has actually got a, a very useful feature with, with, for actually uh, charging the uh, lithium batteries. So using this green terminal in the middle here, um, it will automatically shut off when it reaches, reaches a terminal voltage. Um, so at the moment I'll just put it onto one amp and Go. So straight away you can see that it's pushing in one amp into the batteries which is obviously nothing for a size of battery of uh, this, this capacity um, and you can see the current uh, voltage as well which is 3.37 volts. Um, so we can ramp the uh, current up and I'll keep taking this up. Unfortunately six volts is the uh, maximum this will go um, however that's actually quite good because it's already gone past its um, terminal voltage so you can actually see the currents already started to drop so these batteries must be pretty pretty well well charged already whilst the cells are charging let me show you a couple of fixes I've made to the battery the first is to improve the negative power terminal in the uh, original build video this cable was at an awkward angle so I bought some 90 degree crimp connectors and that has improved the orientation of the cable and removed that nasty bend. Whilst do doing this, uh, I also noticed that the positive terminal post was actually slightly loose. I had noticed that the positive cable got very slightly warm whilst the negative was cold to the touch. Sorting this out means both cables never get warm now, even at three kilowatts running through them. Whilst we're talking about improvements, here's a sneak preview of the new charging screen inside the BMS. This replaces the existing CAN bus page, 
with a new section specifically to control external chargers and inverters, like Victron and Pylon Tech. Here you can set the various parameters to control the charging and place limits on the inverters. I've also been working with uh, Mateus uh, over on the uh, Open Energy Monitor forum, uh, looking at a smarter way to control the battery charge parameters. All of these changes are in the uh, GitHub Pylon Tech branch, so feel free to explore, but I won't be able to offer any technical assistance as it's rapidly changing and under heavy, heavy development. Back over at the battery charging, 18 hours have now passed. The charger is still pushing out uh, over six amps, but the cell voltage has barely moved. It's increased by such a tiny amount. I don't think the cells were as full as I thought. It might be a time for plan B. I'd like to say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters who generously support the development and growth of the DIY BMS project. If you'd like to support me, the details are in the description. Hopefully by the next video, my cells will have finally finished balancing. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.